Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we drift across the sparkling sea and experience a warm summer day on the ocean with a love-struck couple. We'll wander along a rocky coast, see the sleepy seaside town from the top of a ferris wheel, and meander through meadows filled with fireflies as the sun sets on a perfect day. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in here and now. Allow yourself to get comfortable in your bed. You have no obligations at this moment. There are no to-do lists. There are no chores. Right now, you are completely free to simply be. You are free to close your eyes and feel as the stress of the day melts away with every deep breath you take. Your body knows what it needs. All you need to do is listen to the sound of my voice and go on this journey with me as your body does what it is naturally made to do. You can trust in your body regardless of what your mind may say, regardless of what anxieties or stressors you may be carrying, your body will do what it is meant to do. Gently close your eyes and notice the way that your body sinks into the mattress. Feel how truly blissful it is to lie underneath your comfortable covers and take time to give your body the rest it deserves. Rest doesn't always have to be sleep. By simply closing your eyes and letting the world disappear, you are giving your body the gift of rest and it thanks you for it. As you breathe in, notice how your body receives that breath. Feel as your chest expands, 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 and that breath fuels you. As you exhale, feel your muscles and your mind slowly relax further and further and further. On your next few inhales, I want you to try and imagine that breath entering your body and then traveling up, 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 up to your head. Feel as that breath soothes your mind, untangling any messy thoughts that may be residing up there. As you exhale and take your next breath, take the time to focus on how much clearer and more relaxed your head feels now. On the next few inhales, imagine that breath staying in your chest. Feel as it relieves any tension you're carrying in your shoulders and your neck, allowing your body to sink just a bit deeper into the mattress. On your exhale and next inhale, sit with that newfound comfort, finding relief in the weightlessness of your chest, shoulders, and neck. As you inhale again, imagine that breath 
traveling down, 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 sliding over your back and spine to reach the tips of your toes and the ends of your fingers. Feel your fingers uncoil and your wrists relax. Notice any pain or tension in your knees, back, and feet melting away, leaving you with nothing but pure relaxation. You can return to this exercise any time you need to give your body and mind a bit of rest. Know that you carry comfort with you everywhere that you go. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find that comfort in the space that we are in and within ourselves, let us begin our journey. It started like most summer mornings. Lavender had had a long, restful sleep with the windows wide open on summer nights when the humidity of the day had finally disappeared. There was nothing better than opening her single pane glass windows and taking a breath of the fresh night air. It smelled of the salty sea, of the rocky coast, of the lofty pines that were nestled amongst the rocks just to the side of her home. But the smell of the air in the morning was something different. She could still smell the ocean, the pines, the rocky coast itself with an admixture of brightness. She could never quite place it. She told herself it was the smell of hundreds of flowers opening their petals to greet the morning. Some days she told herself it was the smell of the bakers in the nearby town making their strawberry cream and their fresh loaves of bread. Whatever the smell was, it always awakened lavender with a promise, a promise that the day would be full of magical, wonderful moments if she only dared to take the time to look. On early mornings like these, the fog would roll into the harbor. Lavender would awaken to a blanket of it, a veil between her and the world, one that she welcomed. This veil hid the tiny seaside town from her. She knew it was back there, beyond the mystical haze but she had no use for it yet. The world was waking her up on her own time, and for several minutes, it would just be her, the lighthouse she lived in, and the ocean a few feet in front of her. Most mornings, she would sit by the open window as she combed her hair. She'd breathe in that otherworldly scent, daydream about the activities in the day ahead of her, and hum some sea shanties to herself. Sea shanties that had been passed down in her family for generations. Lavender rose from the window giving that early morning fog one more look. It was a gossamer now, thin and angelic, giving her glimpses of the town 
beyond when it swayed and shimmered in the steadily rising sun. Today was not an ordinary day, for today Lavender was meeting a man who was not a local. He wasn't quite a tourist either. He was a writer, a man coming to town to pen some poetry and novels about what it was like being a lighthouse keeper. Lavender didn't find her profession incredibly interesting, but she was eager and willing to meet the stranger, someone with a different perspective, someone through whom she could see her tiny town in a different light. She put on a cream-colored dress tied her hair in long braids, and slipped on her summer hat just before she left the house. As she walked away, she listened to the distinct click, 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 click of the lighthouse as it spun around and around and around and around. It was a sound she had almost tuned out after living here for so many years. But every once in a while, she could truly appreciate it. She meandered down, 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 down the cobblestone streets of the sleepy seaside town. Neighbors waved to her as they went about their morning chores. She could smell them baking bread, popping fresh laundry on the clothesline, pulling raspberries and blueberries from their flourishing gardens. As she walked past their homes, with vibrant gardens poking out behind white picket fences, she watched the grasses and flowers sway from her movement. She made her way down to the docks, where the ferry was set to arrive in only a few moments. There was hardly anyone waiting alongside her. This time of day, there were few people on the ferry arriving to the beloved island. As she saw the ferry approach, her heart skipped a beat. Only then did she realize she had no idea what this man would look like. She had only spoken with him a few weeks ago. But when he stepped off the boat, Lavender knew almost immediately which one was him for more reasons than one. Oliver didn't meet her eyes at first. Instead, he was gazing around the island before him with a look of absolute wonder and appreciation. It was as if he was near tears, taking in a truly overwhelming, beautiful sight. Lavender could see his dark brown eyes sweep along the rocky coast, carefully dancing over each rock and flower. She could see as his eyes traveled over to the town, which was visible now through the leftover haze of the morning fog. Then, finally, she saw his reaction as his eyes drifted eastward, all the way to the lighthouse, to her lighthouse. For a moment, he stood still, taking in the sight with a deep breath. He was dressed 
like a rider, though not like any that Lavender had ever met. He wore long brown trousers with a flowy white, long sleeve shirt tucked into them. The top few buttons of his shirt were left open, exposing his collarbones and a simple silver necklace clasped around his neck. The shirt rippled in the slow breeze as he stood there, running his hand through his black hair as he took in the sights around him. When his eyes met Lavender's, he seemed to stop breathing for a second. Time froze for Lavender as she looked at this stranger, because somehow it felt like she had met him before. He felt like a kindred spirit. Perhaps it was because she, too, looked at the island the way he did, even after living on it for all of these years. She approached as if she were walking in slow motion. When she reached him and extended her hand to introduce herself, the wind picked up around her, snagging her hat off of her head. With ease, Oliver reached over, catching her hat before it drifted off to sea. He gently put it back on her head with a kind smile. Hello, Lavender. My name is Oliver, he said, taking her hand in his. At the touch of his hand, Lavender was almost certain she had met him before. And yet, she knew deep down that she never had. Little did she know, Oliver was standing before her, feeling the exact same way. The two began to meander down the street with one another, heading closer to town. Oliver told her that he wanted to experience Islesboro as a local would. He wanted to see the town for what it really was. To do that, Lavender decided he would have to join her at the Bluebird Cafe for breakfast. She led him with a spring in her step to a tiny brick building on the edge of town, nestled right against the water. The cafe itself had no tables, nor did it have benches. It was a simple building with an outsized countertop inside and enough wonderful food to keep a person hovering outside the door for an entire day. What would you like? Lavender asked Oliver. He smiled at her softly replying, whatever you would recommend, it's on me. Lavender ordered a set course, her favorite. It was all local ingredients, all made by people she knew and had grown up with. The owner of Bluebird handed her a wooden tray overflowing with food. Lavender sat down with Oliver at the edge of the ocean on a small patch of grass, budding with dandelions. She laid out a blanket that had been given to her by the owner, and the two found themselves having a beautiful seaside picnic. The meal was unlike anything Oliver had ever seen. The first thing he found himself drawn to was the freshly baked brie 
drizzled with golden honey and rosemary. Lavender told him it had all been made by her friend who owned a farm up the road. The cheese came from her goats, the honey from her bees, and the sweet, fragrant rosemary from her garden. Oliver slathered the brie onto a slice of toast, made from scratch in the kitchen just beside them. The taste was otherworldly. It reminded him of a million things, but mainly it reminded him of every time he had ever been comfortable as a child. It felt like spending a rainy afternoon in the attic, curled up in fluffy blankets with a book. It felt like a summer day lying in a meadow, doodling and coming up with stories that he would pen in a tiny leather journal he had gotten for Christmas. He savored the taste and watched in amusement as Lavender did the same. She closed her eyes with each bite, and when she opened them, Oliver could see the joy in her gaze. He wondered to himself how many times Lavender had had a bite exactly like that. And yet, here she was, enjoying every nibble. Next, they moved onto the pastries. In the center of their wooden tray was a set of blueberry muffins. The tops were coated in crumbles of cinnamon. When Oliver pried his open, he watched as the fragrant steam poured out of them and drifted up into the air. The middle of the muffin was peppered with bright blue blueberries, the largest berries he had ever seen. Just as he was about to take a bite, Lavender leaned over. She slathered on a swipe of butter, butter that had been made on the other side of the island just last week. The bite crumbled in Oliver's mouth. They sat there for quite some time, enjoying their breakfast. Though Oliver was partial to coffee in the morning, evidently, Lavender was a tea drinker. They sipped on a beautiful light pink drink. Fresh raspberries and basil floated around in the drink, swaying along with the ice as it clinked, 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 clinked against the thick glass jar. Lavender and Oliver enjoyed the view of the ocean before them. It was a slow, enjoyable brunch, something Oliver wasn't used to. He had lived in the city for so long now that he had almost forgotten what it was like to simply slow down and enjoy nature and the world around you. He asked Lavender what their plans would be for the day, and Lavender simply smiled at him. During summer, there was never a shortage of things to do. They could really do whatever they wanted to do. For a bit, they found themselves talking about their childhood. Oliver spoke of growing up in the city, but visiting the country 
on occasion with his family during vacations. He asked Lavender what her childhood had been like. Lavender smiled at him and took his hand gently, bringing him to his feet. Why don't I show you? She suggested. The two wandered down, 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 down the rocky path to the water. The coastline here was covered in rocks of all shapes and sizes, all stacked haphazardly the way nature had left them thousands of years ago. Lavender tiptoed across them, leaping gracefully from rock to rock with a smile on her face. She was making her way up an incline, traveling to a large granite cliff just overhead. Oliver walked behind her, jumping from rock to rock with a kind of childlike wonder. There was something healing about going off the beaten path, about exploring the way only children seem to. It was like a challenge traversing the rocks, and with each step he took, there was more treasure to be found. They traveled past tidal pools, brimming with creatures of all shapes and colors. It was a mosaic of orange, red, green, gray, and blue. An entire world right in front of them that several animals called home. Oliver found himself pausing to look down in each and every one, and to his surprise, Lavender joined him. On one occasion, she stopped and leaned down into the tidal pool, reaching in with her hand with no hesitation. Oliver watched in awe as she softly lifted a starfish out of the water. The tiny starfish wrapped its soft arms around her finger, clinging to her skin. Oliver smiled as he watched it dance along her hand for a few minutes. Then, Lavender leaned down and placed him back on a rock in the water, muttering kindly to the starfish. There you are, little one, back in your home. Oliver found himself enamored with the gentleness of her, the depth of the kindness she had for the smallest starfish. He smiled as he watched her stand up and continue her journey up, 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 up the rocky coastline to the cliff above them. And when they reached the cliff, Oliver could see why Lavender had wanted to bring him here. It was a hidden cliff tucked neatly behind a curtain of fragrant pine trees. But if one were to step once, twice, three times right to the edge, they could see everything. The town in the cove, the lighthouse in the distance, every rock and harbor and sprig of seaweed on this side of the island. It was like having a bird's eye view of everything, including the cerulean sea that was several feet below them now. Lavender told him that she used to come here as a child. It was a place where she could watch the town and 
daydream about the world around her. She loved how quiet it was here, how she could be in her own little world and live as an observer, even if it was only for a few hours. Oliver, too, had a place like that growing up. He told Lavender that as a child, he used to sneak to a church near his house. He would climb up, 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 up the spiral staircase, all the way into the dusty bell tower. The long forgotten stairs would creak as he walked up, and when he reached the top, he would have the whole city to himself. He would sit there for hours, his feet dangling over the ledge as he watched the city lights twinkle and the moon sweep across the inky black night sky. For quite some time, Oliver and Lavender sat there telling stories about their youth, about how they felt out of place and found refuge in the quiet moments they could find alone. It's a shame we didn't have each other, Oliver whispered. Lavender smiled at him, agreeing with his sentiment. It is a shame. At least we have each other today, right? When their time on the rocky cliff came to a natural end, they journeyed down to the town, which was by now buzzing with people. It was a classic New England town with old intricate brick buildings and storefronts coated in glass, selling locally made wares. The streets smelled of flowers and lobster rolls and pine trees, a scent that Oliver wasn't quite familiar with. But as they reached the end of town and began walking down the dock, Oliver began to see something he was familiar with. The dock was a cozy amusement park. There were booths lined with brightly colored prizes, locally named rides, brightly flashing lights, and the sweet, sweet aroma of doughboys, pretzels, and freshly popped popcorn. As they passed a ring toss booth, Oliver asked Lavender if she had ever had any luck winning prizes. She shook her head, saying that as a kid, they never quite had the money to waste on losing at ring toss. Oliver slapped some money on the counter with a smile and quipped, well, we're adults now. Lavender laughed, taking a few rings with delight. They tossed ring after ring, listening to each ting, 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 and then roll off the platform, missing the target by a mile, until finally a ring landed. Lavender and Oliver rejoiced, wrapping their arms around each other with delight. Oliver urged Lavender to pick whatever stuffed animal she wanted. With a smile, she picked a big, fluffy lobster plushie. In the spirit now, Lavender took Oliver by the hand leading him to the ferris wheel. They climbed aboard the wheel and strapped in, 
something neither of them had done since they were small children. As the ferris wheel drifted up, they found themselves overwhelmed by that magical feeling once more. It was as though they were flying above the ocean and above the town, soaring so high that no one could touch them. When they reached the top, the ferris wheel stopped, giving them a view even more stunning than the one they had had on the cliff. A gentle gust of wind shook them in the slightest, and Oliver couldn't help but wrap his arm around Lavender in response. He felt his cheeks flush with embarrassment, but Lavender simply laughed and nestled against him, resting her head on his shoulder. I got the lobster for you, you know, she chimed. Is that so? Oliver replied, his voice tinged with delight. To remind you of the island of today, she explained. And so you know you can always come back. Oliver knew deep in his heart that he would be back. There was no doubt in his mind that this was something essential in his life now. And it wasn't just the island that was making him feel that way. As the ferris wheel lowered them to the ground, Oliver reluctantly took his arm off of Lavender. But mere seconds later, she slid her hand into his yet again, leading him away from the amusement park, back onto the island where she had more adventures in store. He could feel his pulse beating in tandem with hers, picking up speed every time they met each other's eyes. He had never felt this way before, and neither had she. It was late afternoon by then, and nearly everyone was traveling to the restaurants to settle in for a nice dinner. Since it was his first night on the island, Lavender knew immediately what he needed. They made their way to the edge of town, to a small booth. Lavender ordered them each a lobster roll and a basket of fried clams to share. A summer staple that wasn't flashy but was perfectly necessary. Yet again, they had no table to sit at. So after finishing their meal in haste, Lavender led Oliver through town to the east side of the island, telling him that this was a part of the island not often visited by the locals. And as they crested over a small hill, Oliver had no idea how that could be possible. Before them was the most beautiful meadow that Oliver had ever seen. It extended all the way to the ocean on the far side of the island, and to the right of it was the rocky side of the coast. The sweet grass and wildflower swayed, jetting out over the water on this verdant cliff. Lavender laid out a blanket near the water in the meadow. All around them, flowers were blooming and swaying in the gentle breeze. Daisies lupine, lilacs, violets. It was a mosaic of colors 
that Oliver had never seen before. He lay down on the blanket and closed his eyes for a moment, breathing in the incredible fragrance of the wildflowers and the sea mixed together. When he sat up, he saw lavender silhouetted by the sun. It was a sight so beautiful that he was utterly breathless in her presence for a moment. The sky was painted a stunning array of pinks, blues, purples, and oranges, all of which were reflected in the calm sea below. It was like looking at a mirror that stretched as far as the eye could see. Lavender and Oliver talked about the book as the sun set. After all, that was why Oliver had come. And yet, it seemed like the least important thing he would get out of his trip here. They stole glances at each other, and then the sun set as she told him about it all, how the lighthouse had been in her family for generations, what her obligations were, what she liked about it. Oliver didn't say much. He simply listened to the sound of her voice as she told him everything he needed to know. And in the slow moments of the conversation, the sound of the waves and the grass swaying in the breeze filled the silence. They talked until the sun fully disappeared under the horizon, and they continued to talk as the stars began to peek out of the inky black sky. Oliver was breathless. He had never seen so many stars in his life. There were thousands of them overhead, each sparkling brighter than the last. And in the center of the sky, he could see it, the Milky Way, a hazy, cosmic paintbrush stroke across the sky. It was Lavender who was watching him then, watching the way his eyes lit up with a kind of wonder he had never experienced before. Then, some more lights came out. All around them, the fireflies emerged from the cool grass, blinking as they sailed through the night air. Oliver rose to his feet, mesmerized by the sight of them. Lavender handed him a small jar. Then, she slipped off her shoes and stepped onto the grass, tiptoeing around the dancing fireflies. She swiped through the air, gently catching one in the jar. Oliver watched as it blinked, lighting up the glass like a lantern. Then he did the same. He slipped off his shoes and tiptoed through the grass with lavender, catching firefly after firefly after firefly. The jar glowed in his hands as tiny lights sat calmly on the glass. He was utterly delighted, transfixed by the beauty of the moment. He and Lavender found themselves giggling like children as they hopped through the meadow, kicking up the beautiful smell of wildflowers as they looked for fireflies together. Then, when their jars were full, they stood together. Lavender opened her jar first, 
a plume of fireflies emerged between them, floating up into the air like embers from a freshly stoked fire. Oliver watched the way they lit up Lavender's face, her soft features, the color of her eyes, and he felt a kind of admiration he hadn't felt in quite some time. Oliver unclasped his jar. Lavender watched as the fireflies sparkled in the night air, illuminating his dark eyes and the kind expression within them. And when their eyes met, they couldn't deny the magic of the moment any longer. Oliver leaned forward, wrapping his hand ever so softly around the back of Lavender's neck. They kissed there, in the field of wildflowers, with the sea all around them, and as they rested their foreheads together, they knew it wouldn't be their last summer day on the island together. I hope you have enjoyed this story, and it's brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please, join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>